and welcome to the MT Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Anty. My co-host right here is Kyle Heath. This is the show where we cover this week's gaming industry-related news. So we're talking about, what, five different things that we got going on, a little bit of esports and personalities, uh, gaming industry stuff, new and upcoming games kind of sprinkling in there with the state of play coming up, and a couple other stuff. Kyle, what have you been doing this last, like, week? We, we haven't really chatted much because yeah. I've been out of town and disconnected from the internet. Yeah, but I'm you know, sure you were supposed to be playing a game and giving a proper insight of what it was. I finished I think that it game. Was, yeah, Send You Saga. Yep. Right. Yep. That Help. is exactly. Yeah. It. Yep. Yeah. Tell us what happened. So I finished the game. Um, put it this way, I think overall I enjoyed the experience. However, um, it once it got towards the end of the game, um, I I kind of noticed it was building up to something, and I was like. I feel like this might be the end. Like, there's, but, and also at the same time, I was like, there's no way this is the end because I don't feel like I'm that far in. And then all of a sudden it ends. And then I looked up on how long to beat and it was clocking anywhere from five and a half to six hours to finish the game. And so I was like, wow, this is a very short game. Um, that being said, you know, as someone that played the first one, enjoyed the first one, playing the second one, um, my, my really only, like one of my biggest complaints is that it was just too short. Like I wish there was an extra like couple hours and they maybe did some, you know, extra kind of story moments in this one. But I mean, overall, I mean, I, I think um, like overall that the story was, it, it was okay. And I, I, there was at times where, you know, it was like, where it was like really kind of like, I was so immersed. It was like real deep and I like felt all sorts of different type of emotions and stuff like that. So I think it did a good job of like capturing those moments and whatnot. But it's like, it, I don't know the, um, I was just like genuinely surprised <laughs> like when I started when it was when I realized it was like the final scene in the game and I was like like this like this is actually about to end and then it ends and you're just like all right <laughs> like like it seems like you know this is a game that's been in development for years and years and um and you know just to, to see to see it that it's this short is a little disappointing to me um but I mean I think overall as an experience I still enjoyed it um and I, I think too like it's good every once in a while from, from perspective of me, it's good to play a shorter game every once in a while. I wish. Yes. And now a game like this and kind of hyped up the way that it was and kind of shown off the way that it was. I was hoping for more in that regard. Um, just from kind of this franchise in particular, but I, it's, it's kind of hard to say. I think it's one of those games that like, especially if you've never played the first one and you're just like jumping into it, it probably, um, it probably won't hit the way that it would if, say, you played the first one and you've been waiting all this time for this game. It's just, I think there's going to be a lot of people that try to play it and they're just not going to get it or, you know, just not going to get into it. But, um, I don't know, I think overall for a series, I mean, I enjoyed the experience. Again, I just wish, I wish there was more because I, I think overall it was good. The, um, the combat and everything, kind of similar to the first game, but uh, the, the combat is definitely very watered down and it's not really like super challenging per se and like it doesn't really like push the boundaries of like you know combat and other games like god of war or anything like that um it's very kind of it's very sort of you know i guess kind of it's like i feel like it's meant to be easy kind of thing um and even the last kind of fight is you know pretty easy it's been challenging but i think too just kind of more to be desired with the combat but at the end of the day it's like this is a game that's it's meant for the story like the game was made to tell a story kind of thing that's the primary objective in this case it's not meant to be like a combat like to show off some insane combat or have insane mechanics i don't think so it's kind of meant to just tell a story albeit it's brief but that's kind of the main goal and i think it did a good job there but yeah it's uh it's worth thing and two I, I will say this um i this is such a weird design choice with any game but even the game like this i i get I get they're trying to have that cinematic kind of storytelling, kind of that's the main thing. But I booted up the game mic, and for the first like couple hours, like my first little session before I kind of jump back on at a future date, I noticed the game was it had a it had the letterbox bars. It's like the game is like it's got those black bars, you know, like you're watching a movie or something like that. Oh yeah. And like at first I thought bars. it was the opening cutscene. I was like, okay, they're just doing this for the cutscene. But then you start playing, you're like, no, this is the whole game. Like, you're playing with <laughs> these, you know, black bars. And at first, I was like, maybe I can get used to it. But then when I hopped on again after, like, you know, coming back to it, like, a couple of days later, 
like within like a few minutes, I was like, okay, there's got to be a way to get rid of these because like I just can't. I don't know. I couldn't do it. <laughs> it's like I just like I get like kind of what they're going for, but I just feel like so. And I get it's probably part of it to feel kind of restricted and feel sort of like you know add to like anxiety or something like that maybe to like give you more enclosed space. But I don't know. It's like I enjoyed the first game of just kind of not having that and just kind of being the game. So um, I actually found a tutorial on YouTube like pretty shortly after I was like doing some googling. And they were like, yeah, you just have to add this stuff to an INI file and it, the game, you know, looks normal. It doesn't have those bars. And it looked great. Like, the game looked great without it. So it's a weird. I feel like that was kind of an interesting design choice. Um, and yeah. so and I, I wish it was kind of a way to remove it without having to modify files. But sure enough, uh, it was easy enough to get rid of. So, and I feel like, I don't know, I just, like, and I think part of it, too, is, like, whenever I was, like, whenever I was playing with the bars, it was easy it was it was kind of difficult to tell like what was a cutscene and what wasn't kind of thing. Um, it, it's really just came down to, like camera movement because like when you're in a cutscene, you notice the camera gets a little more kind of shaky as if someone's actually filming it. So that was kind of the way to distinguish that in gameplay. And you can kind of tell when you take the black bars away. It was much easier to tell when you were stepping into a cutscene because it's like the kind of the scope of everything kind of like zooms out a little bit, so you know like oh okay this is cutscene part I don't have to do anything, but. It was it was much harder to tell that. So you could tell, like, that's part of the reason probably why they added that, too, is to kind of be able to switch between that more seamlessly. Because um, you could definitely tell <laughs> without them, like, when you were going to a cutscene. But, um, I don't know. I, I enjoyed the game without it. I don't know if they're going to, like, add it in the future, the ability to get rid of that. Um, or something like that, like, natively. But I will say, I mean, graphically, you know, I, I don't play games to see, like, insane graphics, especially on a 1080p display. I don't have, like, a 4K ultra-wide. <laughs> so I'm not, like striving to see yeah. the best of the best in that regard so it's like not a huge priority for me i mean the game still look good at 1080 and from all the reviews i've seen when people play it at 4k and everything it looks really really good so um it's certainly no one's complained about the graphics <laughs> like they say you know it's like visually it's a really good game the sound the audio and everything is i think that was that was the best feature was just the audio and kind of the, the soundscape they create um they really don't go wrong with that but yeah dude i i just wish it was like I, I, like, I could have played for at least a few more hours, you know? Like, I, I feel like I kind of wish there was a little more to it. Um, but, but, I mean, I enjoyed the experience for what is, it was. Does it have any replayability at all? Or is, like, how that work? I mean, not really. There, there's, like, little things throughout the game where um, th there's, there's one thing where there's, like, a... It's almost like a totem of some sort. And, like, you see it all throughout the game. And when you go to it, you can focus on it. And you, like, fill in, like, uh, I guess a Greek letter or something like that. And then there's a little bit, a little part of the story that's being told. And I think it, once you, as you fill those letters out, it tells the full story. Um, and that's just kind of all throughout the game. And there's also like little things. There, there's other little things. I think there was one where there's like a tree where you can like essentially focus on a certain like aspect of the environment and it will open up a pathway to like, to like kind of unlock another section of this like little tree thing. It's, it d didn't really make much sense. And to be honest, I didn't feel intrigued or inclined enough to try and find everything. So there's like little things like that that may give some replayability, but for the most part, I mean, this is very much a one and done, I think, unless you want to, unless for some reason, you know, years down the line, you're like, oh, I want to, I want to maybe like play this again, just kind of, kind of see if I can interpret the story a different way or something like that. There might be something there, but I don't know. I mean, at least for now, it's kind of, for me, it's a one and done. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Yeah. You, yeah. you seem like you're not that excited about it. Yeah. It was, yeah. I mean. I, I just wish there was more to offer. Like it's it's not a it's not like a terrible game by any means, but it's not what I was expecting, and and like in a bad way, it's not what I was expecting. Um, yeah. So it's uh, I don't know. It, it's one of the things like you know I I know like like I know I was talking about the previous episode um of the podcast that like you know Ninja Theory they released the first Hellblade in 2017 like that. It was a couple games they did after that that were more like live service um kind of oriented um, if I'm not mistaken. And, like, those games, obviously, so there was games between this and two, so it wasn't just, like, they were only working on this for the past seven years. Um, there was also, you know, other stuff they were working on. But still, it's, like, you know, for a sequel and stuff and kind of, like, hyping it up and kind of a continuation and an opportunity, I think, to yeah. improve upon a lot of things and maybe try different things with kind of, you know, with Senua and, like, the story and all that. And I just think there was, a, like, missed opportunity there. And it's kind of just... It, I think there's... We're seeing, I think, why this wasn't really marketed a whole lot on Xbox's part, because it's just, I think there was a certain extent as like Ninja Theory, I'm sure they're very proud of the game, and there's a lot of things to be proud about with it, but also it's just like, 
doesn't really offer a whole lot, especially to like casual gamers or anything like that. Um, so it's kind of just like it's kind of a shame. I think they maybe realized at a certain point of like, well, yeah, there's probably no reason to really market this if you know, um, if if there's just not really much there, especially after all the time that was spent to make it. So I don't know. So there's I guess tons of theories about you know what happened there. But yeah, I just wish there was more. Like I really do. It's an okay game, but feel like most people are just not going to be interested in it well where would you put it on the tier list that we put together like two weeks ago mm. would you podcast recommend or don't waste your time i don't know I'm, I'm like kind of between like the kind of podcast recommend and don't waste your time i feel like it's just it, it's kind of niche like if you like story games you might get something out of it if you played the first game i think it's worth checking out um but like if you haven't really played the first one I would probably recommend just go play the first one and then like check that out. Um and then if you're if you really enjoyed it, then you can play the second. But um I don't know. I'm just kind of in between there. It's it's I think for most people it'd probably just be a don't waste your time. Um but if you're into kind of story games and stuff like that, if you play the first one and you enjoyed that, it's at least worth trying. So Yeah, okay. Yeah, it just I wish there was more of the game you wanted to play. <laughs> yeah. Because... Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of people share that sentiment, too. It's like there was, you know, I, I think there was a certain level of expectations. It wasn't like earth shattering, like it seems to be the greatest thing ever expectations for most people. But it certainly didn't live up to a lot of people's expectations, I think. Um, and it's still, you know, if you look on Metacritic and stuff, I'm pretty sure it's still like, you know, 70s, 80s for the most part. I mean, it's still, you know, yeah, it's does, a, it did decently 81, well. 81, 82. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's again, it's not terrible, but I don't think it's, you know, it's not going to sell game pass subscriptions or xboxes or anything like that um that's i think i think that's it's fair enough to say that um so yeah i don't really it's like i i I, you know i'm I'm worried about ninja theory as a studio like if they'd be able to continue doing another thing i think i heard rumors that their next project they already got like a project greenlit so there's like no um imminent reason for them to be shut down or anything like that um well you never know now it is the thing but yeah you just never know so I don't know. It's uh yeah. I, I wish I wish for Ninja Theory's sake it hits it hit a little harder and had more to offer, but yeah. Well I guess we'll see how it shakes out. But yeah. Um I also saw two on Xboxes. I think it's on Xboxes. If on like every Xbox you boot up right now, especially the Series X and whatnot, like if you boot it up there's like a there is a uh splash page that is advertising Hellblade two. And it's like, oh you can get it on Game Pass or oh. do this and that. And it's like on every Xbox and you can either close it out or actually like, you know, get the game. And so they're trying to advertise it, I guess, that way. (laughs) I'm just like, hey, check it out. But I don't know. It's I find it really interesting, too. It's like there's not wasn't really much advertised beforehand. And then now it's kind of like, well, it's out. Let's push it. It's on Game Pass. (laughs) You know, it's a huge thing we were promoting. So whatever. But yeah. Yeah, interesting enough. Um, I never really played the first one, so I don't know too much about it. I just remember seeing all the cinematics and think it was a beautiful looking game. Yeah. But to hear that it's only like five to eight hours long, that's yeah. and kind they, of a bummer. But eight is, it just depends on how but, good it is, you know? Yeah. And they say it was like six to eight, like eight was completion or something like that. But it's like, what I really think about, I'm like, you have to like try almost, I feel like, to take eight hours to complete the game. Because like, I mean, there's just, I mean, oh, okay. you know, it's very linear and there's just, you know, it's not, there's not a whole lot again, but I don't know. Maybe some people well, can make it work. The length of a video game doesn't really affect how good it is. Like I still yeah. think Ori and the Blind Forest is one of the best games I've played in a long time. And you could technically beat that game in like three hours probably. Yeah. But to be a completionist, you can spend a good amount of time on it. It just depends yeah. on what level of the game you want to play, you know? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. You know, Link's, Link's certainly got everything. Um, and it certainly is getting harder and harder for I think studios to meet expectations of fans with games nowadays being like oh, you know, yeah. minimum 15, 20 hours. It's like what they're requiring some of these studios. So it gets harder and harder. So I mean, <laughs> it, like I said, 100%. You know, short games, I'm all for, especially like with a busy schedule. Like I think shorter games are better for most people. And yeah. if you're not playing a story type of game, it's like they don't have much time. So they're just going to hop on a Fortnite or a COD or, you know, and just get a couple hours. Exactly. And that's, that's, you know, that's those free to play games. games are still you know. so popular. Um, really? Yeah, like those those free to play games are always going to have a lot of players because it's like most people just don't have much time. So you hop on and play what you can. That's a fact. Oh man. Hmm. But, um, so you know what I ended up playing this week? 
Oh, Mike Stoll. played something. Yeah, blackjack crap. Let's go. <laughs> he threw the dice. <laughs> yeah, that's. I don't really think that counts though. Um, <laughs> I just played a bunch of different mobile games on my phone. Hey, I don't even okay. know what they're called. Okay. Like you know, those little silly ads that just come up when you're playing something as simple as like poker. Yeah, and yeah. I'll <laughs> just show the guys that yeah. are like the linear running people. Yeah, and you have to go left or right to multiply to destroy things that yep. are coming at you. Yeah, I've yeah. Seen I those, downloaded yeah. like three of those. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. played those and stuff. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to get on the mobile grind game. But this week, man, I'll I'll be caught up with schedule. I have the weekend off. I'm gonna be chilling, playing some games. The pool's open, dude. I might get underneath oh, the canopy babe. over there and just oh, playing some baby. Zelda. So, dude, that would actually be kind of sick. Good. That's a vibe right there. Get under totally umbrella or something like that. Bring out with the switch. Hundred percent, man. Enjoy that That's weather. That's the plan. They got these like round. Uh, it's kind of like California style, round okay. um, okay. like sofas with this little canopy thing going over the top, so I can just be posted up, and that's the plan. Get those, plug in some earbud, earbuds, 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 and then just zone <laughs> out and play Zelda. I saw that there was somebody that made a. Well, there's apparently an entire Reddit dedicated towards Hyrule. Um, no, Legend of Zelda and engineering. It's called like Hyrule Engineering or something like that. Engineer Hyrule. One of the things on the, like, the Reddit. And they basically take all the different uh, physics and things that you can do in the game, the mechanics, and build crazy things. There was somebody that built a workable dragon that like spit fire and had wings that would flap. And you oh could my. fly around. It was insane looking. Um yeah, so something like that I'm very interested in. Of course, they did after they beat the game and they've been playing since the game launched. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's like step-by-step -step guides on how to do it. I thought it was really interesting. But you know, one of the things I'm most interested about is hearing about X Defiant because you and I talked about it multiple times Maybe. with how it could be kind of a bust. And I know some people at work that have been playing it and they've been really enjoying it. And they, hey, man. Dare I say, they said that it could possibly be better than COD. Hey, I will. No, I'm uh, curious. Did you get a chance to play it yet? Actually, I actually did get a chance to play it. I didn't mention that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually did get a chance to play it a couple did. hours. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's it's interesting kind of. It's an interesting game. I think one of my buddies put it put it nicely. He said, "It's it's very much like a COD shooter style, but the movement is kind of it's definitely slower pace. So it's kind of like an in between of Halo and COD. If that makes sense, where it's like from a movement standpoint, kind of the pacing and everything." Okay. Anyways, um, this is an exclusive from Tom Henderson over at Insider Gaming. He said, uh, he said X Fine hits around 8 million unique players in week one. Just one week, Mike. That's, it. That's insane, dude. Man. That's so good. <laughs> Insider Gaming's learned that X Fine just hit a shy, just shy of 8 million unique players in its first week of release. At the time of writing, X Fine has approximately 7.6 6 million unique players, and the multiple sources expect that number to reach 8 million by the end of today. And today was May 28th. So, um, late last week, Insider Gaming reported that X Fine um, had 1 million unique players in its first two and a half hours, making Ubisoft's fastest title to reach that milestone. 48 hours after the launch, the game had 3 million unique players. It's understood that the unique player means that the player has downloaded the game and opened it for the first time. The internal goal was to hit 5 million unique players within the game's first month. Goal that was quickly, um, that has quickly been surpassed. As many from our original report pointed out, unique pl player numbers don't mean much in the, ga in the grand scheme of things. Speaking with sources, uh, several developers working on the project have also expressed the same sentiment, but they have said it's being actively addressed with netcode being the priority um yeah and i i'll say i noticed that too when i played a little bit that net code is it is kind of hit or miss sometimes mike like you're shooting someone you're like my my crosshair is on you dog like what is going on like deep 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 and then it's just nothing yeah. and you're like let's go okay um that's terrible that's yeah there's terrible. It, it's definitely noticeable at times um but anyways to continue on concurrent player data arguably the most critical metric, has reached a high of around 700,000 players achieved on Monday, May 27th, a holiday day for many countries, Memorial Day, but whether or not x Fine can maintain such high player numbers remains to be seen. One thing is for certain, though, it's an impressive statistic. x Fine is available on the PS5, Xbox Series S and X, and PC. Um, have you played x Fine, Mike? What do you think of it? Nope. Let us know in the comments of this article, which... 
Yeah, it's linked in the description. <laughs> yeah. Insidergaming.com. I'm I don't know, man. So eight million players, I mean that's that's awesome. Yeah. First of all, let's get that out of the way. But I'm curious if you know how new games pop off because of social media and like other streamers, YouTubers, all this kind of stuff. The next big thing, everybody wants to play it, but then they can die off rather quickly uh, after the honeymoon phase goes away. Yeah. I net coding is a pretty big issue in a, sh- in a first person shooter, right? And <laughs> after a while, that gets annoying real quick and you stop Honestly. coming back to play. So I, yeah. I don't doubt that they'll fix it. I think they will, but I think it's going to be very difficult. You know, I think yeah. it will be. Certainly. I mean, yeah. this thing too, Mike. These games have been, this game was originally supposed to come out last year, right? They had to let it cook a little yes. longer. They were like, nah, we have some fundamental things here we got to fix. And you come out and spend all that time. Then the game releases and it's like, you know, that code's kind of, it's kind of trash at times. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, spend all that time and like, still got it some could fundamental be because issues, there's so many so. players on the Maybe. servers, you know? Yeah. It could really Maybe. mess things up that some things that they didn't see coming. And the only way to fix it is to go through the growing pains of a new game that's really successful at launch. Yeah. I mean, Plenty yeah. of games had that issue. It's certainly true. I mean, to a certain extent, too. I mean, just play Devil's Advocate. It's like, how long are you going to keep the game from not releasing just because there's, like, you know, problems, right? Because, like, you certainly can iron yeah. stuff out throughout the early stages. So I'm sure that's probably the sentiment here. Yeah, I mean, here's hoping they can fix that sooner rather than later. Because, like you're saying, that could be a bit of a turnoff in a first-person shooter if, you know, bullets aren't registering, dude. You know this more than anyone, Mike, you know? It's just dude, don't get me started. Don't, <laughs> don't get me started. Back in the day, it was okay because it was new and exciting. Back, like, early original Xbox yeah. or Xbox 360. Like the and... novelty was there, at least. The novelty's not yeah. there now. <laughs> like, it was very unique. It was very exciting, but, man... It's like we're we're twenty years going on that happening. I can't be having my shots just disappear, Yay! especially now because people are like making money off of games. So it's yeah, tough, it man. Gets, it gets just, yeah, gets more and more uh, critical mm-hmm. than trying to address. It's yes, sir. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean overall, look, I enjoyed the little time I played it. Um, I haven't played it much since, but that's because I don't want to play solo. And you know, most of my friends are either working or just not, you know, playing other things or. Not playing video games at all. It's like it's hard to find time, but at least Very a little true. bit I play. Hey, it, it was okay. I play again. My friends are playing. I'll hop. You know, that's the big thing, especially with multiplayer games. As long as like everybody's with you, it's it's gonna be a great time. That's it's, that's like why multiplayer multiplayer games are so popular, in my opinion. You make yeah. friends, or you bring your friends along, and then you teach them how to game and stuff like that. It's a good time. Yeah, it's true, man. It's true. I mean, look, like. Wait, the next next article is about a game you've been very uh, passionate about at times, and you know, there's yeah, a community would, out there that's very would, passionate as well. So, you know, it's funny about this game, Star Citizen. Um, it actually inspired me to get into PC gaming. Oh, okay. And because I saw everything that it was promised and all the things that would happen with Star Citizen, and how it just seemed like the perfect game and like a dream game for me. Yeah. I was like, I really want to get into this. So I was like, okay, what's the prerequisites to get this game? And they were like really high up requirements <laughs> oh, yeah. for the PC at the time. So I was like, okay, I got to save up. So I save up, save up, save up. And I figured this game will be out by the time I have enough money and I build my own per- PC. Because like you're always kind of chasing the money to buy the best PC parts because there's always a new round of PC parts yep. coming out like every nine to 12 months. Yep. So I was always trying to save, save, save. I make a full setup. I can totally run the game. It still hasn't been launched yet like <laughs> it's still it's not so officially terrible. launched oh man yeah i at this point man i think it's a, it's a scam and i don't think you can really talk to the people that bought into the scam i think they're i i don't they might be too far gone but <laughs> we'll we'll get into that and yeah. if anybody has never heard of this game before oh boy do we have a story for you <laughs> so this one's coming from ign it's called star citizen pushes through the 700 million dollar raised mark and no, there still isn't a release date. <laughs> it says underneath, to the moon. That's almost a movie. Okay, so. It's almost a movie. Oh, jeez. So, Yesli Yin Poole wrote this article from IGN. And I know this is about to get into it, about what that $700 million means. This game is 100% crowdfunded by the public. And the way they do it is you basically kind of buy 
the alpha version of the game, and then you buy more like cosmetics. You buy vehicles, well, they're ships because this is a space simulator game, and you just upgrade your character as much as you can. And we're talking like these ships are worth like ten thousand dollars USD. They're crazy expensive, and they have their own economy. Mm -hmm. It's like it's kind of wild how they're trying to build it, but. But let's just go into it. I'm sure this article is going to do a better job explaining than I just did. But here we go. So Star Citizen has now raised over $700 million according to the figures from developer Cloud Imperium Games. The developer behind the controversial space sim makes revenue publicly available on its website, which at the time of this article's publication shows Star Citizen had raised $701,186,615. That's USD. So that's a lot. Uh, CIG is the um, abbreviation for Cloud Imperium Games, calls this money funds raised. CIG even breaks down the revenue by recent months, weeks, and hours. At its lowest point on the morning of May 28th, Star Citizen brought in $42,886 in one hour, about $1.5 million yesterday. May 27th, $10,883,513 this last week and fourth four million seven hundred fifty three thousand two hundred sixty four for the month of april things appear to have picked up considerably in may after the launch of the alpha 3.23 adventure beckons update what do you think about those numbers so far because you've heard me rant about it several times i mean the game's not even out yet <laughs> that's insane dude i I would have never guessed in a million years that this game is pulling in that kind of money in a day, oh, a month. Yeah. And so it's, it's absurd, man. It's, it, is that just is, so? Is that seven seven hundred one million? Is that including this revenue, or is that literally just what they raised for crowdfunding? I think because uh, I think that's including this as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I would hope so because that's so much money. <laughs> it's like that'd be insane if that much was crowdfunded. But yeah, jeez, dude. It's insane, dude. You're spending thousands on a shit, a cosmetic, and a video game. I can't comprehend uh, it. You know what a sunk cost fallacy is, right? Yeah. That's basically what's going on here. This game has been promised since like 2015, and they keep doing more and more alpha launches and stuff like that, and one little thing here, there, and the other. And the directions constantly change. There's nothing really going on with it. I mean, the game was originally built to be its own economy, like... Oh, dude, what's that Space Sim game that I literally just forgot in my head? Shoot. Well, one of the explor exploration style ways of doing it is like very, very realistic, 4K resolution, high graphic um, intensity, like almost CGI kind of thing, which is kind of funny because the abbreviation <laughs> CG CIG. Um, and, and what they do is it, it feels and plays similar to No Man's Sky without the animals in it oh, or the npcs i see i see like it's supposed to be an open world playable game everybody can see each other yeah. uh let me let me actually look up the space sim game i'm thinking of it's just it's like the most it's like the longest one running ever eve online so it's like a eve, mixture between okay. eve online yeah. no man's sky uh they also want to have like call of duty style shooters in it and very like it's kind of wild man it doesn't make sense how they can promise all of these things and it sounds too good to be true and it's been development since 2015 things never coming out uh oh man yeah i yeah it's just wild man but let's let's continue on with this star citizen is considered one of the most controversial projects in all of video games over the 12 years since its crowdfunding drive began it's been called many things including a scam by those who wonder whether it will ever properly launch its virtual spice, spaceships, some of which cost hundreds of dollars, are often the focus of criticism. Alpha 3.23 launched two months after CIG began talking about Star Citizen 1.0 launch being within sight. Over a decade after the game released, its first crowdfunding drive. Crazy. <laughs> so CIG chief Chris Roberts, who runs another business called Chris Roberts Industries, um, has said 2024 will see the launch of Star Citizen Alpha 4.0 and that the developer is working to bring feature features developed for squad, uh, Squadron 42, which is the standalone story-based game starring the likes of Mark Hamill 
and Gillian Anderson to the uh, Persistent Universe portion of the game at an accelerated rate. Yeah, okay. Squadron (laughs) 42, everything in Squadron 42 was supposed to be in Star Citizen. It was supposed to be just another feature that you could use. So they've broken that out to create another cash cow. And the crazy thing about Star Citizen is, is they hire these like world famous actors and actresses to play different characters and the cinematics look gorgeous and beautiful. And dude, I've seen like, I've seen diehard stars, star citizen fans and YouTube channels that run star citizen content. And they're just like, yeah, I love this game, but I got to be honest with myself. It's just a wallpaper simulator. It just makes your (laughs) game. Like the game looks beautiful. You're just flying around the world, but that's literally it. Oh, damn. That's it's, a, it's the ultimate whaler. It's that the ultimate whaler, dude. It's wild. Anyway, so this is all building up to Star Citizen 1.0, which Roberts has said is what we consider the features and content set to represent commercial release. However, there's still no release date or even release window for Star Citizen 1.0. CIG will share the roadmap, roadmap later this year, it has said. And if you do the little survey here, when will start? Uh, when will Star Citizen finally release 1.0? There's 2025, 2026, 2027, and wouldn't you know that never <laughs> has 72 percent of the vote. vote. <laughs> like, Let's go. 9,400 <laughs> people voted on this. Uh, dude, oh, it's just man. it's just a straight up scam. It's something that I've been following for the longest time, and I've been waiting for it to launch. I. St- I'm still on the email list. I get routine emails like once or twice a month and they do these like, Oh, here's the new update. This is what we've done. Check out this. And then they like, dude, it, it's just a sales pitch for everything. And I, mm. I respect what Chris Roberts envisions or says that he wants to do, but the execution is so poorly done that it's like, you're just hemorrhaging money, dude. You're scamming people at this point. It's wild. $700 million in crowdfunding what is the incentive to finish the game if you're making money off of the game? He found the ability to keep getting money without releasing the game ever. And people sign like contracts and stuff like that where it's like it's not a release project, so you can't really complain. It's your money that you're giving us. It's insane, dude. Insane. Yeah, it's. I just can't get over <laughs> he was saying that. He said the one point low. The 1.0 launch is within sight. We're going on a decade yeah. here, and we're just now within sight of a official release. 12 years. I mean, and it, the persistent universe of Squ- Squadron 42 is going to come out at an accelerated rate. Like, what? Like, listen, it's no such truth to this, dude. Listen, dude, I've never played Star Citizen, but I have to ask, is the game fundamentally butt, or is it actually good? It, it was unplayable for at least eight years. At eight years. At least eight years. Eight years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Like, like I mean, unplayable. Like the game would routinely crash. You couldn't do certain elements that were promised. Every single deadline that he said that it was going to come out, or like certain things, certain features would be available, keeps getting postponed. But then they add in like, but we, but we worked on this new ship. Like, check this out, dude. For for the ridiculousness <laughs> that this might be the first time some people have actually heard of Star Citizen before. Let me look up their economy uh, for ships. Let's see if I can find this. It was like, this article I just clicked on is a blog from 2013. That should tell you a lot. Oh my gosh. I don't even, yeah, it's like climbing the ladder, make your own economy, become different merchants, like become a mercenary. People can contract you out to do things. It's just, oh, dude. By the way, it's purchasing ships. This game will not be released Come in on. 2024. Just saying, you know. Forever. Like, uh, imagine being told that, like, you bought in 2014, and they're just like, "Oh, by the way, in a decade, uh, we still won't be released." Have fun. <laughs> it's like what? I just, yeah, I can't believe it. I would never fund this. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sure the game's like, I'm sure people enjoy it, right? Obviously, if you're making that much money in a month of this game. Like, there's obviously a uh, fan base. Obviously, people that enjoy it. But I mean, if the game doesn't run like complete dookie, just, just release it, man. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for, for really? Like, just don't I get mean, it. Dude, it's out of control. Like, it's completely out of control. There are ships that 
you can buy that are 200 to $250 and that's considered like reasonable entry level ships. And there's some that get a little bit below a hundred. It's just, it's just wild. There's like, there's a star citizens bundle pack where you can get 175 ships for $48,000. Like, like the price, of, the price of a, a luxury car. <laughs> yeah. The price dude, of a truck. <laughs> like, jeez, dude. It, it's insane. So I just pulled up rarest.org and I just did a quick little Google check of expensive star citizen ships. I hope this is wrong. There's something called a 600i executive edition. It is 25,000 real dollars. What? 25,000 real dollars. What? Wow. The um, f- wow. Wow. By the way, we have a Patreon that we're working on. Do everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. If anybody's <laughs> considered buying that, here, here's that for a second. <laughs> yeah. It, there, there's a, a thing called a Javelin, which is a very popular ship. It looks freaking awesome, dude. Yeah. It's $3,000. Now, hold on. Before people like completely freak out, because it's completely unreasonable, don't get me wrong. There is something very fascinating about being able to go inside of the ship, being able to go in all the different rooms. You need to hire an actual crew to run certain compartments of the ship. So that you can actually function, which is kind of cool. Wait, like uh, with in-game currency? Or like real you currency? can pay people like with in-game currency. Like that's oh, what they okay. promise. They're basically oh. trying to create a true virtual world, well, space universe yeah. in this example, where you can do literally everything. Yeah. Like imagine which, what you do on a daily basis, but you can do that also in a game. Which sounds great as an elevator pitch, right? And a lot of people probably bought yeah. in because of that. It's like, oh, that sounds awesome. Oh, hundred percent. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you know. yeah. It, it's the ultimate elevator pitch, dude. This needs to be studied in laws, <laughs> like in uh, in finance classes and business yeah. school, and particularly marketing. Oh, wow. This might be the greatest marketing of all time. I mean, hey, really, might be. You're you're still bringing in millions a month. I mean, hey, <laughs> doing something right, you know. Crazy. You know, not doing something wrong, that's for sure. That's insane, man. I just like paying it's the price of a car or price of a pc if you want to build like a decent pc it's like three grand that's yeah i'll get you a pretty decent pc so uh, yeah yeah, it's wild to me it's it's like i keep going back to my units of measurement for cash i just think about what can i buy on a pc with that amount of money so if it's something that's like eight hundred dollars it's like okay you can get a decent motherboard you know good enough graphics card like you know three thousand dollars you could get a whole pc like an entire one um and it would run great but wild dude twenty five thousand dollars you can get a brand new like 2024 i don't know subaru wrx <laughs> probably <laughs> like uh, zero it's, it's insane dude like yeah you can get a yeah, whole that, car paid for that that's a healthy down payment on a four hundred thousand dollar house in yeah. most cities yeah like, you know Might as that's well. that's just nuts that's nuts nuts but i mean oh. hey some people they can do it what they want with their money like yeah. it's all based on percentages right if you're a multi-millionaire hey, look well that was 25 grand you know that's I mean, nothing that's like people, spend 25 yeah. bucks if you make 100 i mean yeah, true. some nothing. people got it like that you know i'm not saying they don't but it's yeah. just insane to me you know as someone as a middle class as a lower middle class individual <laughs> probably <laughs> if i'm being honest here <laughs> like that's that just seems insane to me but yeah but no i mean i get the point i get it i mean for some people that's nothing so and you know, yeah. maybe one day that'll be kind of nothing to me. I I don't know. We'll see. I'm working on it. You know, yeah. But... <laughs> to me, man, it's just why are you paying for a service that's not finished? Eh, for real, that's the ultimate why are you prepaying thing. for something that may never exist? Yeah, exactly. That's that's the ultimate thing. Doesn't make figure. sense. It's like it's not even out. Yeah. Who knows if it'll be out? Why would it get? Why would they push it out? It, what it are makes we doing? Sense. You know, that's the real question. <laughs> well, you know something that did get pushed out by a company that mm-hmm. you and I both True. know and use on a daily basis. Probably True. people are watching this on this platform. Yeah. Let's that's give cool. them a rundown. What did YouTube recently do? Shit. It's a good. good thing. Listen, to those that just heard a Windows notification, that was a random Xbox notification on my PC. All right. So if you're in your car, it's not your car stereo being hacked. All right. It's just 
It's my PC. So, there we go. YouTube rolls out its new playables games to all users. This is a once, ex once exclusive YouTube Premium members playables includes over 75 games you can play directly on YouTube. I had zero idea about this. Let me be honest. I had no same, idea. This existed. Same, honestly. So, this yeah. is all new to me. Um, Ash Parrish writes this over at The Verge. I just have to read this, uh, the little description because it's just funny to me. A reporter who covers the business culture and communities of video games with a focus on marginalized gamers and writing about the intersection of video games and sex. That's interesting. I never knew Ash Parrish was, you know, writing about this kind of stuff. I got I to gotta read more Ash Parrish. So, everybody's getting into gaming these days. YouTube joins the slowly growing list of companies with gaming initiatives, rolling out its playables program across mobile and desktop. To play, simply visit YouTube's website on or Android iOS app and look for playables in the sidebar. YouTube will let players save their progress and keep track of high scores. There are over 75 games to choose from, including chess and crossword games, to more popular casual mobile titles like Angry Bird Showdown, Trivia Crack, and Cut the Rope. I, I, I gotta visit. Mike, I'm visiting this after the show, all right? I, look, I'm, I, I'm reading right the article, now, so you got all the time in the world. Go for it. That's, that's exactly what I'm doing. YouTube began its foray into gaming last year, offering playables to YouTube Premium subscribers. That initial phase had far fewer games and was only around for a relatively limited amount of time, with the phase wrapping up in March of this year. Offering a slate of casual games has become one of the more popular ways that tech companies are using to lure in and keep subscribers. LinkedIn recently rolled out its games offerings with apparently pretty entertaining the New York Times, Hearst, and even Netflix have added have all added games as part of their regular services. Even YouTube's parent company, Google, tried to hang in at tried to tried its hand at gaming in 2019 with Google Stadia cloud gaming service subscription. After a little more than three years, Stadia was shut down in 2023. Long live Stadia, mm -hmm. salute. I remember Stadia, dude. Long live Stadia. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, they're, they're, that's pretty much it for this article. But the reason we were talking about it is because I I've been a YouTube Premium subscriber for five plus years at this point, and I. Never heard best. about this or saw this. Like this is all completely new to me. So it's something I definitely want to check out um, at some point. Um, just because I didn't know that you know I could go on YouTube and play games. That sounds pretty sick. But I'm definitely I definitely want to give this a shot. Yeah, it actually makes a lot of sense that they would move out Stadia but not give up entirely. It's like we already built yeah. YouTube to run anywhere all the time. Might as well just add a couple of Flash games to it in a way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, you play. I, I didn't say if any of the games are multiplayer. I'm assuming not. I think it's all just single player stuff. But like, I feel like chess would be. It'd be really sick if you could like actually hop on chess and play with someone else. <laughs> That'd be kind of sick. Or play against someone else, I should say. I f but, dude, I feel like it has to be multiplayer. If you if you look at well, I mean, like yeah, technically all these games can be played by bots. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's a sidebar. Where, where's the sidebar? On that's what I was trying sidebar to find. Sidebar mobile. What, what are we talking about? That's what I was trying here? to find. Do, do you have a do you have an Android or do you have I have an iPhone, but an I, Apple phone. Yeah, I don't know. I can't find it. <laughs> I know. Maybe I'll I have to, to update. I'll, I don't know. I have to look for it after the show. I have no idea where it is if it's available on mobile. Um, because yeah, is it? Mm. Let's see. Because the, the article. Uh, let's see. Because they said somewhere. Yeah, to to play, simply visit YouTube's website or Android iOS app and look for playables in the sidebar. I, I'm playables in sidebar desktop, sure. But uh, app, I don't know. I don't know. Like Lynch. I clicked on my name in the bottom right hand corner, which usually yep. does that thing. Yeah, that's what I said. Like, view a channel. channel? That's, yeah, no. this is. Hmm. Come on, Ash Parish, you gotta help me out here. What's going on? What's good? You like, know, what? I'm gonna I'm gonna search playables. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's right. It's like the best thing to do. You can play State IO. I don't know what State IO is, but it looks like you're trying to take over states. Is there like picture? an extra upgrade that we need to do? I don't know. It seems recent from what they're saying. So, no. Uh, yeah, it says. Maybe it uh, just hasn't yeah. been pushed yet. Hmm. Let's see this other article. YouTube is getting into games too. This is November of last year. A few platform. Yeah, they offered 30 mini games. This is strange how it doesn't seem like easily accessible. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's for it's, YouTube uh, Premium, right? Yeah, I mean, now it is. Um, 
I think it All was right. once, right. but now they're pushing it out to everyone. That's what the article said. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna look for updates. It's so weird, Mike. But yeah, dude, ladies and gentlemen, go and play some playables on your YouTube app if you can find it. Because uh, yeah, if you can't. can find it, it's the big one. Because I'm <laughs> over here like, I guess I'm just dumb, just staring at my phone trying to find it right now. It's I, I don't know. I just don't know. Let's see app settings, perhaps apps. Let's go over here and search YouTube. Maybe if we click on it, it'll give us an update feature. You know the one thing we do know about Mike that we just learned about today. Switching up. <laughs> oh. oh, this news actually just broke broke today, which is pretty sick. Do you want to tell them what the, what it is? Yeah. Why you Google playables? <laughs> kind <laughs> of. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, nope. It's up to date. I guess it just wasn't pushed to my Google oh. store yet. Come on, Google. Anyways, let's get to the actual news. We are looking at Game Informer State of Play. So if you don't know, that is PlayStation's little conference that they kind of get together, do a big presentation, let everybody know we got new games. So this one, again, Game Informer, Kyle Hillard. Hilliard? Hey, Kyle, what's good? Let's go. Yeah, Kyle. You're all drinking uh, Monster Energies all the time, right? Right into the uh, veins? I mean... I won't deny it. I don't think I've ever seen you drink a monster, actually. You probably I, stopped. Dude, after zero, the no, came zero, out. zero ultras. It's the only thing I drink. Zero ultra flavors. Oh, the white ones, right? Yeah, white ones, pink ones, yeah. orange ones. There's so many different ones. You know, just any of the ultras, dude. Monsters are pretty tasty, to be honest. It's true. It's true. Anyways, so Sony, PlayStation, State of Play. PlayStation will hold a state of play this week covering 14 PS5 and PS2 or PS VR2 games. Sony has announced its intentions to hold a state of play broadcast this week um, that will last for a little over 30 minutes and feature updates on 14 PlayStation 5 and PlayStation VR2 games with a specific focus on PlayStation Studios titles arriving later this year. It's pretty sick. So this is going to be Thursday, May 30th, 3, 6, and 11. Well, my bad. 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, 11, which 5, 6, European time? Yeah, British summer British, time? I don't know. British <laughs> I standard time. Yeah, standard. Yeah, that's probably, yeah. I think so. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Pretty cool. So we got here, Sony has no additional details, but some PlayStation Studios developers we have not heard from in a while include Asabi, which is Astro's Playroom, Bend Studio, Days Gone, Blue Point, which is uh, Demon Souls Remake, Gorilla, which is Horizon Zero Dawn, House uh, Marquis, which is Returnal, Insomniac Games, which is a big one, Spider-Man. I feel like... We've kind of heard from Insomniac because I mean, of like Spider Man that Spider-Man came out last 2, year. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't too long ago, right? Spider Man 2 yeah. came out, so yeah. Yeah, well, uh, Naughty Dog's Last of Us, and yeah. that one I, I definitely want to hear about. Santa Monica Studio, God of War, which I feel like just came out, um, and Soccer Punch, which is Ghost of Tsushima. Is it Tsushima or it's, Tsushima? I think, it's, I think it's Tsushima or Tsushima, kind of tomato tomato, but it's definitely Tsushima. the T is silent. So. Sushima sounds better. I, I definitely don't think it's T. I yeah, got to debate yeah, with my coworker over yeah, that. No, T is yeah. silent for sure. So. Okay, Sushima. So there are more, but those are arguably the developers gamers would be most interested or excited about to receive updates from. And at the very, very least, Kyle over here is hoping for an Astrobot uh, rescue mission PlayStation VR 2 port. I want to see more VR2 games because that means the envelope of the development of games can be branched out further into play, like uh, personal computers. And yeah, I got the true. standing desk now, dude. I'm ready. Let's yeah. do it. I mean, hey, we heard it from the man himself earlier this year, the replacement for Jim Ryan, that uh, they were yeah. they wanted to be aggressive about, you know, especially getting games on a PC. It's obviously their goals, you know. Do more of that. Yeah, so. and, and putting together a uh, subscription model as well and yeah, sort, expanding yeah. the VR2 space. If they could somehow allow like all these different companies that are doing VR headsets to use their software or like, allow PlayStation games to be played on them, that could be game-breaking. It'd be really cool. I mean, yeah, it would be, but then, you know, all of a sudden that PSVR2 is... <laughs> it's going to be that useful, Mike. I don't know. Like, 
like that. Yeah, that's true too. They're gonna push yeah. the flagship. I don't know, but uh, it's an interesting thing. I so I, I sh- I'll say right now, I don't think we're gonna hear anything at all from Naughty Dog because they literally just canceled their multiplayer Last of Us <laughs> that they were working on, and so they're. I yep. think they're. You know, obviously they know what they're working on next. Um, Neil even talked about in an interview this past week about like you know he's working on they're working on something new now that he's very excited about and doesn't want to talk about. Um, but um, so I mean there's definitely something in the works. Definitely way too early to announce anything, so I, I don't expect to hear anything from Naughty Dog. Um, although I am excited for what they have, you know, going on next. But I think it's safe to assume we probably won't hear from them. Um, yeah, I mean, Insomniac Games, I I would also doubt we would hear anything <laughs> from Insomniac, considering Spider-Man was so recent. Uh, Spider-Man 2. Um, uh, Santa Monica. Yeah, Sony Santa Monica. I I mean, we might hear something. Um, I, I think, too, it's like, it wasn't too long ago they released that kind of DLC sort of expansion for uh, God of War Ragnarok. Um, so I, you know, I, we might hear something, I don't know, we'll see, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, I think especially like Ghost of Tsushima, I know they're working, I, I'm pretty sure they're working on the second one or they were talking about working on a second one. So, I mean, it'd be, yeah, they did. it'd be awesome if we heard something about that, um, at this, at this showcase, but at the same time, I mean, I wouldn't be totally surprised if they waited on that. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, for me, Ben studio, I'm very curious about that. I love days gone. I was very upset they didn't get a sequel the day's gone but it also made sense from a business standpoint i'm just kind of like look could have done a sequel but like y'all like kind of slept on the game and like kind of ruined our opportunity to you know try very and, true. and get funding so that kind of sucked that but i i really just i'm curious to see kind of more about what's working on next um yeah blue point of course gorilla Ryan zero dawn um it's it's been some time since that's been out so i'm curious to see kind of you know working on anything new and you know, what's next for them um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of interesting things there. I, I think what's important to mention, too, is which we've covered before, a PS5 Pro of some sorts is in the works, and I think probably yes. later this year we might hear something about it. And if that's the case, I mean, also, if you're if you're doing a, a Pro iteration to the PS5, I mean, would you not want some, like, heavy hitters to launch with that? So you may want to wait until you talk about that more to maybe talk about some of these heavy hitting games and, like, maybe make some bigger announcements. So, um... Like I, it's it's. I mean, I'll be. It'd be awesome if we heard some kind of earth shattering at this, um, you know, tomorrow. But I, I think too. And well, I mean, by the time you're watching this, you've already seen it. So, um, or hopefully you've already seen it. So <laughs> you'll kind of, um, we'll know if we're right or wrong. But yeah, I mean, just from a perspective going into it, I hope to hear some stuff. But I'm not like you know, my expectations are kind of like middle of the pack. I'm not expecting anything crazy, um, per se. I feel like that's fair enough. I I would like to see, I'm on the same page, just a little bit more content that we haven't heard from some of these developers. I just looked up right now that Sucker Punch really hasn't launched anything since 2020, and there's no new announcements for new games. So I think the state of play today, I don't know, have you heard any news from it? Like, I mean... I mean, uh, I mean, nothing not particular, kind of like you know, nothing leaked outside, yet. Nah, like outside of this, not really much. Just like speculation, mostly. What I've heard, but yeah. But I mean, I mean, the PS5 Pro thing is, I, I think, is kind of an interesting, you know, perspective on it. And it was something that I had heard, and I was like, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, that would make sense make to sense. maybe wait a little bit on some stuff, and maybe not announce, you know, a whole lot of like craziness when this for this state of play. But I don't. We'll see. It's also like what a week before kind of the summer games fest stuff so um yeah it's, that's it's the crazy. other thing it's as crazy well to think about mike it's a summer it's a week dude so... it's a week bro it's you know you know what's yeah, wild too it's on, the, it's on the 7th mike it's literally next week it's on the 7th that is a friday for those that don't know interesting time frame for that because that was normally like a thursday if i'm not mistaken so no um, it was a friday was it a friday it was a friday last I time like... I, I believe what we ended up doing is our episode came out on saturday i think Oh, Did I it? think you're actually right. I think you're yeah. right. We I might just do that again. Hey, I got new plans. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we'll see. Oh, I know what it was. Now that I remember, we did our usual. Uh, I know we're getting kind of sidetracked here, but we did our usual episode, and then we did a special specifically for the Summer Games Fest. Oh, maybe we did. Yeah, I'll have to go back and yeah, look. We yeah, we hundred percent did. Um, yeah, we'll go. We'll go back and double check and try to just repeat whatever it was. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Um, um. But yeah, I mean. Oh shoot! I'm going out of town next week. That's not good. Well, we gotta sort that out. <laughs> yeah, we'll take it offline. But yeah, I mean, I think. Yeah. I think overall, it's like, I, I it's just crazy. We're already here, and it's like we have the state of play stuff. 
Also after this, which we didn't mention, but there's also another article out there, um, the Silent Hill transmission that's happening after this. So there's yep. like a Silent Hill showcase about updates on that kind of stuff. I'm very excited for that because I want to see what's going on with the Silent Hill 2 stuff. Um, so very excited about that. So it's kind of like aside from this, but there's there's a couple things on the 30th that it's like, okay, I'm excited. Some things to watch tomorrow yeah. night. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, it's going to be really good. Um, we're, we're definitely getting into those summer months where more and more games are going to be announced. We might get some like well, what uh, what's it called? Like quick announced releases, day drops, kind of thing. Yeah. Does that make any sense? What there's like a specific industry term for it that I can't think of right now. Mm. Uh, shoot. We think about like a release, like a silent something? drop, quick drop, something yeah. drop, yeah. rain drop, can't stop. Uh, rain drop, drop top. <laughs> oh don't say that part we'll get dmc <laughs> so yeah i'm i'm mostly excited just to see new games coming out of playstation unfortunately i don't own a playstation so hopefully they're gonna have yeah. a bit of a, a segment for pc gamers and yeah. all the different ports that are going to be coming over Look i mean it. ghost of tsushima should have came out what this past month yeah like, i think it was like yeah it, was, it wasn't long ago right count for pc i, I think like it was soon. the month of may oh, yeah. it came out it might be out right now to be honest uh, let me do a remember. quick little check, but I Listen, mean, there, there's more games that are going to be coming out, you know? Yeah, all, all I'm saying is look, when whenever that PS5 Pro is announced and it drops, I want to get that just so I can play Grand Theft Auto 6 when that comes out, all right? Because we can get a oh, PC release a on point. launch day. That's going to be further down the road. That's a good point. Because Rockstar's that's Rockstar, and they got to get the console version out, so. Yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna have to have some sort of console. I play didn't even on, think about so. that. Yeah, that's that's probably what I'm gonna <laughs> eventually like be like. All right, it's time to get a PlayStation. Why not? So. Yeah, I'm also really interested in the Switch. The Switch yeah, too. Yeah, Switch too. So yeah, it's probably next yeah, but that's year. That's not gonna. Oh, that's not gonna have game. That's not gonna have GTA. No, it's not. <laughs> no shots. No. We'll have Call of Duty though. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, it's funny. We didn't even cover that. But like, before we move on to the next thing, Call of Duty. Is announced coming to Game Pass, but the even funnier announcement, which I thought, was that they're still dropping that game on the last gen consoles, baby. <laughs> so the next COD yep. will be the last gen, but it's because most people still play COD on the last gen. No one's like upgraded, especially for COD. Like no one's upgraded, so it's like uh, that's funny. I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't upgrade yet, but hey, money money is hard to come by nowadays. Feels like everybody's mm-hmm. struggling. It's rough out here. That's a different know. issue. But you know, it's no longer I'm speaking issue. of a different. Yeah, I was about to bring that oh. up. <laughs> Good segue. No longer. We got another one from IGN. Thanks for giving me the IGN articles, by the way. <sighs> yeah, um, this article is coming from Ryan Dinsdale, who we've covered plenty of his articles. Pretty cool uh, guy over here. So this is about Cyberpunk 2077, a game that I have yet to finish. So now I feel pretty guilty that the game is finished, like actually <laughs> finished. So finally, <laughs> after three and a half years after launch, no one is working on Cyberpunk 2077 at CD Projekt Red. And it's an end of an era, Ryan says. So this is kind of a short and sweet article. Let's uh, let's get into it. Cyberpunk 2077's launch in December 2020 was one of the most disastrous in recent memory. But now, Excellent. three and a half years later, developer CD Projekt Red is finally done fixing it. I felt like the game was halfway decent and playable on new gen stuff. The old gen, though, not worth your time. Ain't touching it. Nope. Nope. Playable. Mind you, playable. So that's the yeah. key word. It definitely got significantly better after just a year of launch. Um, but yeah. So revealed in its latest financial results, not a single developer of CD Projekt Red is working on Cyberpunk 2077 for the first time in more than a decade. Wild to think about it that in those terms. The studio breaks down the number of employees devoted to each of its major, yeah, many projects in each financial presentation. And while the Cyberpunk 2077 team stood 17 members strong on February 29th, 2024, that final group is now nowhere to be seen and likely migrated onto other projects. I hope so. You never want to hear about people getting laid off. But if you open up that graphic, you can actually see where development teams engaged in ongoing projects are at. Kind of wild to see that they have, what is that? How, How does that math work out? 1,257 developers, and they have one, two, three, four, five, six ish projects listed here. Yeah, well, they have kind of interesting. It's well, it's 630, right? Because we're talking about from February to April, 
Like it's the same groups, but just the distribution. Oh my bad. You know, I, it's like six. Yeah, thank you yeah. for correcting me. Yeah, <laughs> my bad. I'm over here like looking at uh, combining the two months yeah. <laughs> of February 2029, and then a month later, April 30th. Yeah. Thanks for correcting me. Yeah, so there's really only 630 developers working on these games. Yeah. Sheesh! I bet they would love having twice that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's probably pros and cons, but yeah, and you you even see too, like there's a couple like. You know, it's it's expanded by three. They've hired a couple people. They're not, they're not, they ain't firing people. Yeah. They're hiring people. Love to see that. Oh, or five people left and like eight got added, you know? I could be like know. that. Who knows? Yeah. So let's get into this. CD Projekt Red wound, uh, wound down? Yeah, wound, wound down. down. Wound down. Yeah. Wound down the development of Cyberpunk 2077 after the release of its first and only expansion, Phantom Liberty, in September 2023. It came after the game-changing update 2.0, which completely revamped Cyberpunk 2077 with features such as a new perk system and improved AI, and was followed by another big update in 2.1, but only minor changes afterwards. Patch 2.11 addressed myriad, myriad? Myriad uh, bugs. Myriad. And myriad, probably. Myriad? Uh, yeah, myriad bugs. See, this is, I'm only good with numbers, man. <laughs> sort of. I kind of just proved that wrong. Uh, <laughs> myriad <laughs> bugs and balance issues in the open world role playing game while 2.12 uh, applied a seemingly final layer of polish CD Projekt Red is now looking firmly forward towards Cyberpunk 2077 sequel and codenamed Orion and it's Myraid My it's myriad. Myriad? Myriad. That's myriad I think it's Myriad on the firm. I think it's Myriad <sighs> it, so it sounds like a witch name it's Myriad, myriad a weird incoming kind of witcher games yeah because like okay. in english it does, does make sense if you say myriad incoming games it almost sounds like it should be myriad of incoming games right so i don't know it's really kind of odd but yeah very odd english is tough man words are difficult <laughs> yeah it, it really is a hard language um yeah but dude i mean it's interesting to see in this graph you got 17t uh, on cyberpunk that yeah, was like a very like skeleton team by that point but now we're at a point it's yeah. like all right let's move on to polaris i believe polaris is the next witcher game um, so Witcher 4, they have most of the people working on that. If I'm not mistaken, too, it's still in pre-production. I think they're planning to go full steam ahead by later this year um, on the next Witcher game. So, yeah, you got mo okay. most of the team focused on that. Um, Orion, um, I, I think, yeah, that they, they were saying that's the next kind of cyberpunk entry. That's kind of pre-pre-production, I'm sure, at this point. Kind of the initial concepts that were being drawn around. Is, Is it, it Orion or Orion? I, I have no idea. Orion, like it's it's a good question. I'm, I'm I pretty no sure that's or Orion, dude. It's, if it's Orion, are we hey. stupid? Is it serious? <laughs> Ser like Siri, like Siri, us? Yeah, serious. Um, Hold is on. it Hatter or Hater? I don't yeah. know, Mike. These these Polish people, man. I don't know why they're naming it these. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Orion, serious. Hadar, Hadar, maybe? Hadar sounds right. Is this like some? mythology i don't know of I mean, what are these names what are, the, uh, what are the origins of these names i don't know let me let me I feel like there's probably a pattern here i'm just google translate it. real quick yeah it is hadar hadar okay hadar. i i might not have no idea how to do uh myriad or myriad <laughs> but i know orion and hadar hadar <laughs> yeah. I mean it's i should have i should have googled what those projects are because i don't know if they stated kind of what they are but um, I know Polaris is um, is Witcher, Orion is Cyberpunk, um, and so, I was yeah. So what it says here maybe? is, I, don't know. I believe S Polaris is uh, Witcher, and then Orion is a sequel to Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Yeah, yeah. Um, makes Hopefully. me wonder what Sirius and Hadar are. I have no idea. Um, but you know, there's multiple Witcher games that they're trying to make, so uh, maybe it's one of those. Very cool. I mean, it'd be crazy if they're thinking that far ahead. That's kind of nuts. Pre, pre, pre planning some of these games. <laughs> but, I would imagine yeah. so. They definitely have like a development team that's just spitballing ideas. Yeah. And there's their entire job is to basically pitch a new story and hopefully it works. So, you know, yeah. you gotta, gotta have stuff in the back burner in case yeah. friends change, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, shared services too. I'm assuming that's probably stuff along the lines of like GOG or maybe I don't know if GOG is their own team. You know, geo, like gog.com. I, I don't know if that's their own yeah. thing, but they're, I think they're under the umbrella anyway. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. 
it's, it's interesting to see the shared services and whatnot. Uh, you think Gwent's probably in there somewhere? <laughs> the Gwent card game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would think so. I mean, it was incredibly popular, wasn't it? Yeah, sure was. I don't know. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to see. I mean, um, it's uh, yeah, I think I think too. I mean, I just love the redemption story of Cyberpunk. I think it's one of those games where it's like you know, it was it was just like it was a letdown for a lot of people. I think fundamentally, when I, I I will say when I played it like first when it came out, I still enjoyed the story. Like I and I again I played it on a PC like a high-ish end PC, so like I enjoyed the story. I didn't run into too many like game breaking bugs, fortunately enough in my playthrough. Um, so I was kind of able to enjoy the game. I think from, from more for what it was probably than some people. Um. And I think it just helped playing on PC too, because I think PC, especially if, it, if you had higher end one, it was a little more stable. Um, so and I, I thought I thought fundamentally though the game was great. Um, I, there were certainly some aspects where there was more to be desired, like the police system and you know driving and whatnot. I think there was you know there was definitely more that could be done that could have been done there. I think before launch, and you know this game as a game too that was just plagued with delays, and so <laughs> it was like three or four delays That's and stuff like that. And it was just like it was a it was a weird cycle, but. I think the fact that, you know, I went back and played through the main story and I got about halfway through Phantom Liberty and I need to get back to it and finish it. Um, but it's like when I played through it again, it was like it was a much, much more polished game. And I was like, yeah, this is what it probably should have been on launch. But I mean, I'm glad I was able to play through it again and enjoy it from a different perspective, too. And I uh, see that it's and I think the game held up well. Story is good. Um, yeah, I mean, I think overall, like after all the polish and everything. I mean, it's it's a good, solid game, and they didn't give up on it. And I think that's that's uh, I can appreciate you know a team just saying like, hey, we're let's just make it right <laughs> at this point. Um, and you know we can once we get this right. Um, and two from like a development standpoint. Um, and it was mentioned at GDC and stuff like that from some of the people that that worked there of like you know there there was and we've mentioned too on the show throughout articles about how there was fundamental changes in their structure of development. Um, as a result of the disaster that was the initial launch, and they kind of stepped back and said like, all right there's got to be a better way to do this. Let's start thinking about it. And so, you know, after some thinking and after changing up their model, it really showed and kind of when Phantom Liberty came out and the difference in the game as a whole that was yeah. made. Um, from their changes. So, too. Yeah. Um, and they just became, they developed more efficient process that hopefully can carry on to the next Witcher game and kind of their future projects. And, you know, hopefully we can get, you know, um, some, you know, efficient turnarounds. But yeah, it's it's interesting to see. I mean, just like from going for the more like siloed approach of just like keeping, you know, every department separate and just kind of working on their main thing to eventually just saying like, all right, let's just take like one, let's make like these teams of like one people from each department so we can like all work on a team. And so you can get stuff done in one team and not have to worry about sending stuff to other teams and waiting to hear back. And, oh, this is wrong. You got to fix it. That's a good it's point. Like yeah. Going down the chain. It's like just being able to have like these sort of more isolated teams of people with multiple skill sets. You can just get kind of more things done more efficiently because you know, you're not having to worry about, you know, working on the next thing. And then it end up being messed up in the third or fourth chain of approvals and <laughs> kind of design features. And then you have to restart. So yeah, it's a, I don't know. They, they, Develop more efficient way to do that. So it gets me excited for the next stuff. And that being said, the way like Cyberpunk launched, it's still you, it's, there's still that cautious optimism. I think with every developer now at this yeah, point, that's very true. So, um, it's like you hope they learn from that. They really proved that it was a step in the right direction. I think with the Cyberpunk DLC, so we can hope that in a full scale game that carries over. But also, you know, they're they're getting away from the Red Engine, like they're going to go into a oh, yeah, good Unreal old Drive. Unreal, yeah, good old Unreal. Yeah, so. it's gonna be. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, we'll see how much of a learning curve it is, and hopefully, it doesn't you know, um, you know, screw anything up. But you know, new engine, a lot to learn, I'm sure. So, yeah, I think they're going to be totally capable of it. I'm, I don't mm. know the developers personally, but it's, Cyberpunk games have been pretty well developed. Not Cyberpunk, sorry, CD Projekt Red games yeah. are well developed. Yeah, always been smooth. I mean, yeah, like you just said, Cyberpunk 2077 had a really rough launch. Yeah. But they figured it out and created it, created like a heck of a good DLC and good expansion. Uh, it's unfortunate that it didn't launch that way, but I mean, hey, they got there eventually, right? <laughs> so <laughs> take it with how you want it. Uh, yeah. I need to go ahead and finish the game. And just going to the comment section of IGN over here, there's people that have basically said, hey, um, I have it, like I bought and own the game, it's on Steam. 
and I've never played it. And there are people like, well, the DLC was amazing. The patches are better. It's like, it, it's a perfect time to get into the game now. And like, you can really yeah. go enjoy it. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's probably Everybody's the best time to get into it. Yeah. If you haven't played it, I mean, there's no better time to play it than now. That's for sure. Um, I'm just kind of the oh, state that it's in. Yeah. So, um, and I, yeah, I get second done. on that. So it's, yeah, it's um, solid on that front. Yeah. I mean, I was just thinking about, back about it too. I mean, I know Cyberpunk had a pretty, pretty rough launch. I remember Witcher 3 in particular. I remember like there was actually like a period, especially when the game launched, where it was like, especially on like newer cards. It's it's hard to think, but at the time it was like 980 TIs and stuff like that were like kind of good cards, right? And so, but even at that time, it was, was like it crashing. Yeah, like they had a crashing issue, I think, especially for like kind of the yeah. higher end cards uh, on that game, even. I mean, you know, not the, not the best launches, but hey, it's uh, undeniable. Like Witcher 3 is undeniable. Cyberpunk, I think, That's ultimately became undeniable. So, I mean, they do things right over there i won't i don't scold them completely there's some people you know that probably <laughs> lost all their um you know faith within the team whenever the initial launch for cyberpunk happened but i always I, you always have to give credit to a studio that's like yeah we messed up the first time but we're at least gonna make it better yeah. before we move on so some you know like hey well, hello I games probably... no main sky like we, hey, hey, very true it can happen yeah it can happen it can 100 percent happen i think I think with uh, Cyberpunk 2077, I played it about within six months after launch. Not there, there were a couple of updates before those six months. Yeah, I do remember seeing some bugs where I was like, "Ah, this kind of took me out of it." Yeah, and it wasn't very interesting. <laughs> but I know people that played it start to finish on the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. Not the same people, but different people that have also finished on both games. And the ones on the Xbox Series X said they didn't really encounter very many problems. The one the Series S said, yeah, it would crash, and there was weird phasing. I could see through walls at points, but I really <laughs> enjoyed it. So yeah. it's got to be a good game if you have those kind of immersion-breaking level bugs, yeah. but you still enjoy the game itself, and you keep playing back, like going back to it. I still see like TikTok vids where people are playing Cyberpunk 2077, and they're viral videos. Yeah. It's kind of... I'm, I'm not saying that's a gauge to how good a game is, yeah. but... It can't be terrible, you know? Yeah. I mean, I will say, too, like, I've seen videos and stuff, too, on Cyberpunk and kind of, like, you know, like, retrospectives and kind of, like, overall, like, reviews and stuff like that. And one thing I never really took into account was, like, the fact the fact that within Cyberpunk, the ability, the different combat trees you can take and just what you can do in the game from a combat standpoint is, it's truly remarkable. And I think there's, like, there's different avenues you could take. But also, I I think it's just, it it, like, when I see someone do, like, full melee, and just like the what they could do, just like flying through the air, and just like it makes you feel yeah, like a total badass. And it's just like 100%. they just they do a really good job of that. And I think for an RPG, it's like if they can make you like feel normal in one instance, but then the next one you're like this just superhero or super villain, and you're just like you're just you're striking fear at everyone and like killing ten men a second. And it's like there's there's something uh, it's nuts, there's something crazy about that with how especially the melee combat. I didn't realize how good it was in that game until I saw like someone actually like you know doing melee to the, it's yeah. like the best you can do in that game and like seeing it from like a <laughs> like a crazy point of view. It's like yeah, you could really like I thought the gunplay was fun, but like just seeing someone do melee, it's like I just want to max out everything in that <laughs> just like be a force yeah. to be reckoned with. I don't know, it's crazy. It's so much fun to play play the game how you want to play it too. Yeah. You can be like a spy, you can be a hacker, and you can do everything that they promised. And yeah. I thought that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So you got to give them props for that. And that's yeah. just a CD Project Red kind of branding of their games. With The Witcher was kind of like that too. Yeah. There are different ways to play the game, but they give you the ability to choose. Yeah. And that's that's, yeah, that's very thing. cool. Like a good RPG gives you the choice in that, right? Being doing what you want to do. And yeah. And it giving you that freedom. Um, and yeah, I just think about it too, like think like Bethesda RPGs and stuff like that. Like the old Fallout games are great. I think kind of the new cyberpunk stuff, or new cyberpunk, like the new um, <laughs> the new um Starfield. I think just like looking at that yeah. game and lo looking back at that, it's like yeah, from like a movement standpoint, you couldn't do like melee combat stuff. I, I don't think it'd be nearly as exciting in that game as something like cyberpunk. But no. but also too, I think I it's um, there's other aspects that are good about it. I don't know, it's it's wild just from an RPG perspective, how good like cyberpunk is from like a combat aspect, skill tree aspect, like. It's a it's a good RPG. It certainly is. Well, I think that's all the articles we really have for us this week. And I feel like it was a good 
chunk of um, a nice little change of pace. Next week is going to be absolutely insane <laughs> with everything that we got going on. Yeah. Uh, with yeah. all like the state of play that's happening this week. Then we got Summer Games Fest. So it's, dude, we're going to have a lot to hit people with. One of the things we can kind of finish up with is the video game releases for oh, yeah. the month of June. Oh, it's the end of the um, month, Mike. Why is it the end of the month? Yeah, it's, it's actually crazy, dude. It really is. I, I'm not liking how fast everything's going, to be honest. <laughs> but we'll do this again. So what I found is, is like a good handful of games are going to be launching this this month. And to be honest, there's really not a whole lot of heavy hitting titles. I think that has a lot to do with the showcase. Multiple showcases that are coming out this next two weeks. Most of them are expansions, it seems like. But I'm going to do my usual thing where I start at the beginning of the month and then I work to the end. Uh, some of them you've definitely heard of. Other ones, eh, not so much. So the notable games releasing this month, we can start off with The Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road. That's going to be the first June 3rd, that's first week, along with actually four, five titles in the first week. So you got The Elder Scrolls Online Gold Road, Destiny 2 The Final Shape, um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game, which is going to be hilarious because that's based on the movie. <laughs> um, going to be absolutely ridiculous, or I hope so. Uh, Empires of the Undergrowth, which honestly I don't know much about. Do you know anything about it? It's coming know. out to PC on June 7th. Well, then they have the same day Dragon is Dead. Um, a couple other ones you got is Monster Hunter Stories. This is the second week of June. Monster Stories, which is a remaster. You have Shin Megami, Megami, Tensei, Tensei, V, Vengeance. <laughs> I'm no butchering that. that. That's all Ooh. platforms, and that's June 14th. Uh, June 18th, you have two more games. You got Still Wakes the Deep, which, if I remember correctly, is actually like this one. I remember, I, should, I meant to Google this before I got started. But basically, Still Wakes the Deep, I think it's a horror game. It's based in the ocean. Upcoming oh survival gosh. horror video game developed by the Chinese Room and published by Secret Mode. And when you look at it, is this the one that is you are on an oil tank? Yeah, you're on an oil tanker. It's a horror survival game on the horror tanker. This was in the oh. showcase that we watched a couple of months ago, I think in February. Oh. It looked pretty interesting pretty scary there's a lot of crazy stuff going on so that could be an interesting game for people that like horror there is hashtag blood i don't know a thing about it. i'm not even gonna try to make it up is uh, blood? That is, yeah june 18th and then we're finishing off with elden oh. ring shadow Ooh. of the urge tree that is june 21st on playstation uh, pc and all the other platforms as well except for switch oh man yeah so we got some games coming out. Most of them seem to be expansions or sequels, DLC content. Not a whole lot of stuff really going on. The big stuff that's happening this month is absolutely the showcases. And we plan on covering Summer Games Fest, State of Play, and the Xbox Game Showcase, which I believe is yep. right after Summer Games Fest. It's on Sunday. Sunday every year. Of this week? Sunday or of yeah, next week. Okay. Yeah. We got ourselves a week, man. Yeah. Well, I'll have plenty of time to watch it, which I'm excited for. And yeah, yeah man. That's really all we got. Do you see any games there that you knew about or thought about? I, I didn't realize the Destiny expansion was coming out this month, but hey, let's go Destiny 2 yeah. fans. You get your expansion. Let's go. Yeah. 100%. Uh, it, yeah. It's usually like, I like doing these at the end of the month or, well, technically at the beginning of the month because it's kind of a reminder of the new games coming out. Yeah, so when people sure. like it's a reminder for me and you, but then I get to do a little bit of research of like, oh yeah, that's what this game is. No. Just could be good. I mean, yeah. Did the Elder Ring expansion? I know a lot of people are excited about that. Um Elder Ring oh, is, yeah. you know, it's crazy. You know, Kai Sinat did his Elden Ring string stream a couple weeks ago, and like I didn't know if he was actually gonna like it because he didn't seem like somebody who liked that kind of stuff, but like he praised that game after he finished it. And he was like, it's such a good game. And it's like, everyone should play it kind of thing. Um, so I know he's excited for the expansion. I think he's, he said he was going to play it. So all right. it's there's a lot of eyeballs on that game now um, just from you know him streaming it. So 
um I, i'm sure yeah. there's a lot of people excited and ready to hop back in on in that game because um yeah those those souls likes man they get people they're good they certainly do yeah it, it's pretty addicting <laughs> i think yeah yeah, but um, I don't know. I heard about Killer Clowns. I saw like an article for it, and I was like, I, "Oh, this is a game coming out soon." <laughs> yeah, and sure enough, um, that's the thing. Monster Hunter people, you get your Monster Hunter remaster stories. That's exciting. Um, and Dragon is dead. I was about to make a joke and be like, "Dragon's Dogma." No, it's not. It's not that. It's a different game. So. <laughs> Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, I don't. I don't know too much about half of those games. Most of them, I've been <laughs> like the ones that I do know about. I've been kind of looking at but i've never been super interested of going for like the the still wakes in the the deep i thought it was a really cool trailer but i didn't look any more into that yeah. the rest of them just seem like sequels and the other ones are kind of unknown to me and specifically the one i could barely even pronounce <laughs> so <laughs> yeah 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 i agree Elder Scrolls online didn't realize that was still getting expansions but hey if you play so still still got new content baby Come on, you always know the Elder Scrolls is going to be coming out with stuff. <laughs> it's like the longest. It's like a cash cow almost. Yeah, especially yes, so. Yes, sir. Crazy beliefs. Well, we have been ranting for quite some time. Why do? Like, let's just go ahead and let the people go. Um. Yeah. So, thank you for joining us on the M2 podcast. If you want to check out any of the articles, they are linked in the description below, along with plenty of timestamps that you can check out for yourself of just like maybe come back leave come back whatever we do this for every single article or every single episode and yeah that's really it we got social medias you can follow you can check us out on all audio platforms youtube whatever and uh that's pretty much it kyle you want to add anything oh dude get ready for new games and uh, in uh, two weeks we got a lot of showcases yes sir oh, i'm looking forward to the big week just big going through it us. together big weeks for us yes sir let's go we'll give a full break down that's what that's what we did last time summer games fest we just yep. went through everything that we watched we basically watched it together last time and just did uh comments and stuff yeah you know much. that was pretty cool yep. but yeah we'll, we'll let everybody go thank you for watching we really appreciate it i'm michael anty this is kyle heath and uh yeah we'll see you next time peace out bye everyone two weeks two weeks <laughs>